Welcome back everyone to another video. Now if you are a Linux enthusiast, you would have come across the terms Valent and Mir. Both of them are meant to be a replacement for the X server and are designed from scratch to bring GUI rendering to the GPU, wherein the X server did the same uh, and relied on the CPU. While Valent seems to be the industry's favorite at this time and can be seen already deployed on development operating systems like the Fedora 25, Mir is Ubuntu's way of doing things primarily developed to be used with the mobile operating system, also known as the Ubuntu Touch. Ubuntu's Mir is available to test and is installed by default on Ubuntu 16.10, but that is not enough. Since it's still very much under development, it doesn't work on all types of GPUs. For starters, when this launched, I tried it on my i3's Intel HD 2000 GPU and it didn't work. Then on both open source and closed source NVIDIA drivers on my GTX 960, that also didn't work. After that, on my upboards Intel HD GPU and an old Core 2 Duo's Intel family graphics chipset and none of that worked. It was only recently when I got my new laptop with the Pentium 3805 U that I was able to run the Unity 8 desktop environment. Keeping in mind that Unity 8 is designed to be used with the Continuum feature on mobile devices, I will be comparing it to Android from time to time, like the fact that it has a drop down style notification and quick settings panel on the right side of the screen. That being said, it does share a lot with Unity 7, like the taskbar on the left side. Clicking the Ubuntu button gives us a scope window instead of an app drawer of sorts. First, we'll take a look at the inbuilt browser. Although it is not Google Chrome, it's also not unusable. It's a pretty lightweight browser with YouTube already shifted towards HTML5. The absence of uh, a flash player shouldn't be much of an issue. Video playbacks and general browsing is smooth, although I didn't notice ad spots missing, which actually seem to be an inbuilt feature. Maybe they are still recovering from the Amazon fiasco. Although pre-installed apps work fine, any apps installed later on using Snap or APT resulted in a blank window titled XMIR root window and that's it. Since it is still under development, I'll let that one go for now. And then we have the settings app, which in this case provides very few options even from a mobile operating system standpoint, although an inbuilt VPN option is a welcome addition. One of my favorite features of Unity 8 is the multitasking user interface. Although both Android and iOS are doing the card style multitasking, Unity 8 reminds me of the album cover flip style animation on older iTunes and iPods, which even by today's standards is one of the best user interface elements I have ever seen. By now you might have noticed the lack of normal Ubuntu apps that is because unlike Wayland, Unity 8 cannot directly run apps not built to work with Mir. However, there is a solution to this and that being Libertine. This application creates a sandbox like environment for these apps to run. That means there will be a big compromise on their functionality. For example, with Cheese, it cannot access the camera making the application completely unusable. There is also the GIMP app which kind of works, the main window opens up but the subsidiary tool windows don't open limiting its overall functionality and usability. On the Chromium browser side of things, it opens up fine but soon starts glitching out, ultimately resulting in a crash. At the end, Unity 8 is still under development and honestly it kind of worked better than I had expected it to. But this UI design it's, is by no means ready for a regular desktop views. It relies too much on gestures uh, that are really hard to perform using a mouse, let alone a trackpad on a laptop. Unity 8 is better left for touchscreen mobile devices. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Leave a comment down in the description and I will see you all in the next one.